Namaste angels. I'm here to do the daily reading for October 10th, Monday, October 10th. I had sat down to do client readings. I have several that I would like to do, but um, I felt and heard the universe directing me instead to do the dailies because I have, um, we all have, um, brothers and sisters out there who may unfortunately lose power. And so it could be for a time a uh, last opportunity for me to pray for and with them. So I'm going to do that uh, instead and I'll just start right away. Uh, our beloved parents, the divine creators, divine source, unity consciousness, divine temples, Akashic elders, galactic federation of light, all beings of divine love, light, truth, and wisdom, mine, Roy's highest selves and the highest selves of all light beings, mine and Roy's highest selves and the highest selves of all light beings, mine and Roy's highest selves and the highest selves of all light beings. I call on you all now and I request the following for myself and for Roy and for all beings of light in the divine unions, in all versions, throughout all dimensions, throughout all concepts of space and time, on all levels of consciousness, throughout all aspects of existence. Please remove all trauma and restriction for myself and for Roy and for all beings of light. Please neutralize and negate all negative dissonant energies influencing myself, Roy, and any other beings of light anywhere throughout all existence and transmute these removed energies back to divine source. Please retain all learning experiences detached, attached to these energies acknowledging them as complete on all levels. Please transmute to love any interfering energies released throughout our being as they complete their energetic transition. Please release and clear all negative programs for myself and for Roy and for all beings of light in which we may be consciously or unconsciously participating or that we may be receiving with or without our knowledge. Please replace these energetic programs with new energies of emotion that align only with divine love, divine light, divine truth, divine wisdom, and serve me, Roy, and all beings of light in aligning with our highest path and purpose and the highest path of love. Please clear all discordant energies to divine love before releasing it back to source. Please replace all discordant energies with divine love, light, truth, and wisdom. Please sever all vows, contracts, hooks, cords, hexes, promises, curses, threats, spells, beliefs, and patterns that I and or Roy have made or that any light beings have made either knowingly or unknowingly that have interfered with divine love, light, truth, and wisdom and or are no longer in the highest good of themselves or all. Please include revocation of all contracts that were perceived to be irrevocable. Please replace these agreements with knowledge and understanding of mine and Roy's and all light beings, highest paths and purpose and the highest path of love. Please replace Excuse me, please release myself and Roy from all and all light beings, from all negative emotions, mental patterns, physical disease, and energies associating with creating or participating in these agreements. Please close all portal ways to other astral planes, dimensions, beings, or lifetimes not in alignment with mine, Roy's, or any uh, other light beings throughout existence, highest good. Please heal my Roy's and all light beings, golden webs of any and all golden web tears, scars, tar, and red fibers, replacing all tainting with, with golden creator substance only. Please restore mine and Roy's physical DNA, chakra system, energy bodies, divine soul blueprint, karmic files, and soul matrix to perfection for optimal operating in my and Roy's highest good. Please ensure that all subconscious, conscious, and superconscious are healthy and fully connected, working in complete harmony under all conditions. Please update my and Roy's soul and all light being soul records with the highest path and purpose available, dissolving all paths that no longer that are no longer in my and Roy's highest good or the highest good of any light beings. Please expedite my and Roy's and all light beings spiritual growth and elevate our level of consciousness by removing all perception of limitation and judgment that may be arising from the collective consciousness. Please assign a teacher of the highest possible divine order to assist me and Roy. I hear Ar Archangel Raphael in the back. I got slightly distracted. I apologize. Uh, to assist me and Roy and all light beings in unplugging from the collective consciousness and transitioning into a paradigm that reflects only divine love, light, truth, and wisdom. Please allow all upgrades to penetrate my, Roy's, and all light beings' physical bodies on a cellular level, integrating our spiritual growth into our reality. 
physically manifesting all positive changes into our current dimensional reality, whatever that may be. I understand that we're at varying levels here. Please assign members of mine, Roy's, and all light being spiritual committees to ensure that all upgrades take place in a manner that is optimal to our spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical comfort. Please infuse me and Roy and all light beings with positive perfection of divine, universal love, light, truth, and wisdom. Please place fears of divine love and protection toned to the universal energy of six, magnified to the cosmic energy of 12, equating to magic number nine, with silver modulating above, below, and around us, inclusive of all subtle bodies into infinity and beyond. Please allow love to pass both ways. Please place a circle of ultraviolet light and violet fire outside the spheres to cleanse and purify all negative energies. Please assign a peacekeeping guardian angel of the highest divine order to uphold these conditions. Please also remove any additional souls, discarnate energies, wolf packs, demons, earthbound spirits, ghosts, poltergeists, talker stalkers, and any other positive or negative entity that is attached to or interfering in any way with myself, with Roy, or with any light beings anywhere throughout existence. Please return all removed entities to their respective appropriate planes. Please provide a third order escort to each and all of these entities, ensuring their removal and don't allow any to remain. Please contain any and all entities that resist and transport them to the astral planes justly earned. Please block all further access to myself, to Roy, and to any light beings from the removed entities for all time on all subtle levels via any instrument such as, but not limited to, crystal, implant, or other object. Please sever all connections to these entities that they may have with any other beings, positive or negative, that may conduct acts of interference on their behalf. Please fill all memory channels and access points to these entities with golden creative substance, severing all connections for all time. Please remove and render void at root issue all promises, contracts, bindings, vows, pacts, compassionate connections, and any other agreements between myself, Roy, well, between myself, between Roy, between any light beings and these other entities that are causing interference for us for any light beings anywhere. These include, but are not limited to, all that are secret, hidden, invisible, covert, unseen, unheard, unknown, unacknowledged, undisclosed. Please remove them all from all levels of consciousness. Thank you. Please remove all negative operating systems and instructions including backup systems and program copies. Please retain all learning experiences from trauma and restriction. Please remove all negative programming and heal the soul blueprints, subtle bodies, soul matrix, and genetic codes for these entities, reconnecting their subconscious, conscious, and superconscious, restoring them to the highest possible alignment with divine love, light, truth, and wisdom. Please place fears of divine love toned to the universal energy of six, magnified to the cosmic energy of 12, equating to magic number nine, with silver modulating above, below, around, and about these entities, inclusive of all subtle bodies into infinity and beyond. Please polish the spheres on the inside so the darkness must remain contained within the spheres. Please contain all darkness until this entity desires complete clearing. At that time, darkness can be transmuted into divine love, light, truth, and wisdom and released. Please assign teachers of the highest possible order to these entities to assist them in rediscovering the God spark within. In the highest good of all beings. In the highest good of all beings, in the highest good of all beings, I entrust that these intentions will be carried out with joy now and in all aspects of existence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is, and it is done. Amen. Okay, and thank you, Archangel Raphael, for coming through. It's, it's my fault that I got distracted, that I let my train of thought be broken. All right, so now, Hurricane Matthew. I uh, just want to mention a couple things about it. Hurricane Matthew is currently a strong tropical cyclone over the Atlantic Ocean. It was the first Category 5 Atlantic hurricane since Hurricane Felix in 2007-9. Total fatalities thus far, 289. The date, September 28, 2016, and this is important, the date. 
uh, it's a, it was a category four hurricane at that time. Affected areas thus far have been Columbia, that's the country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Cuba, the Bahamas, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Now, the date is important because um, it started sort of in the air um, September 27th, which was 999 or 9. It first made what they call landfall on September 28th. And by September 29th, which was not only Michaelmas and Angel Day and Archangel Day and um, the Feast of Archangels, Raphael, Michael, um, and Uriel, but it was also according to the Enoch calendar, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, also known as the Festival of Trumpets. Okay. The Festival of Trumpets. I had been telling you guys that I had kept hearing trumpets. And not only trumpets, but um, Louis Armstrong singing when the saints come marching in with those trumpets. It starts out. And also, Mac the Knife by, I think it's Bobby Darren. This is a very old song, so it's not like it's on my, you know, playlist. I don't even have a playlist, to be honest with you. I only listen to music in the car, but that's another story. Um, so right away, when this hurricane began, I felt that was Mac the Knife coming from the water, just like the song describes. I don't know how many of you have seen the uh, picture that's going around the internet of the NASA's capture of what the weather system looked like it looks like a skull smiling you can see his teeth and that song Mac the Knife it talks about the pearly whites like he's showing off his pearly whites that was another reason why I was like it really is Mac the Knife that's not all when I began to have this feeling I thought about how the scriptures say that a third of the people will be wiped out in the end days. There are currently 7.4 billion people in the world. That's 11. I multiplied that by 0.33 to see how, much, how many people was a third equated to. It was 2.442. So 2442. 2442. I recognized right away, I said, that's a famous scripture. I couldn't remember where, what book in the Bible. I Googled Bible 2442. It's Matthew, like Hurricane Matthew. It's from the book of Matthew, this famous um, Bible verse. And I will read it for you. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming, but know this. That if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Now, I thought that was something really powerful. Um, and then I proceeded to get all kinds of messages from the book of Matthew. He just started the other day when I recorded and I said I was getting messages all day long, the day that I recorded, I believe, the um, full moon video, that's what it was. All kinds of numbers um, that turned out to be Bible verses from the book of Matthew. And I was like, here's Matthew again and more trumpets. I got other verses from the Bible, numbers I was given the reference trumpets as well. Um, and that's not all. <laughs> what happened after that was... 2442, or what I realized after that, 2442 is also 66. There are 66 books in the Bible total. 66, of course, equaling cosmic, the cosmic energy of 12, which equals 111. Of the 66 books in the Bible, I believe it is 39 or 12 or 111 that are from the Old Testament and 27 or 9 in the New. 
what else had I really, there was other stuff that I had realized having to do with Matthew. I lost it. I wanted to tell you guys all this stuff, but I, oh, um, one of the most devastating days thus far of the storm was during Rosh Hashanah again, not based on the Enoch calendar, but based on the Jewish calendar that the world is following currently. So Rosh Hashanah was celebrated on 10-2 through 10-4. Those were some of the most devastating days of the storm. Again, the trumpets. I believe um, the time is upon us, but as you know, I've already believed that and that there's only a certain number of years uh, left um, remaining for us to enjoy this planet and to, you know, treat it properly. And I just wanted to share all of that with you um, as guided and to pray for those who may, who have been affected or who may be affected. And now with that, I can go into the day. So again, it's October 10th, um, which I'm doing today. Going into the historical events in the year 680, Al Hussein Ibn and his followers are killed at Karbala by the, by the army of Yazid, Yazid, Y-A-Z-I-D, on their way to Kufa, K-U-F-A. In the year 1780 or 88, so more eight, the great hurricane of 1780 kills 20 to 30,000 in the Caribbean. So this is like deja vu, hitting Barbados first. It is the Atlantic's deadliest recorded hurricane ever. The year 1899 or 999, American, African-American inventor Isaac R. Johnson patents the bicycle frame. In the year 1954, Ho Chi Minh enters Hanoi after the withdrawal of French troops. In the year 1957, a fire at the Windscale nuclear plant in Cumbria, UK, becomes the world's first major nuclear incident. Did you know the first dinner jacket or tuxedo is worn to an autumn ball at Tuxedo Park, New York on this day in the year 1886? Famous birthdays. Giuseppe Verdi was born in 1813 or 13. He died in 1901 or 11. Fridjof Nansen was born in 1861. He died in 1930. R.K. Narayan was born in 1906. He died in 2001. David Lee Roth will be 61 years old on this day. And Chris Offaly, O-F-I-L-L-I, I'm not familiar with his work or what he does, but he'll be 47 or 11 on this date. Famous weddings in the year 1773, American Revolution Patriot Paul Revere, 38, 11, weds Rachel Walker in Boston, Massachusetts. 1774, 8, 11, uh, St. Germain and Lady Portia and Justice and Abundance. An infinity, uh, infinity, uh, composer Antonia Soleri, 24, weds Teresa Helferstoffer in the year 1975 or 13. Actress Elizabeth Taylor, 43, is it's her sixth marriage and remarriage to actor Richard Burton, 49, 13, 1987. Paralympian Rick Hansen, 30, weds physiotherapist Amanda Reed, 1992-111, actress Ali Sheedy, weds actor David Lansbury, famous divorces, 1974-111, actress Elizabeth Montgomery of Bewitched, 41, divorces director-producer William Asher, 53, after 11 years of marriage. And in 2008, actor and comedian Chris Catton, 37, divorces model Sunshine Tut, 32, due to irreconcilable differences after two months of marriage. And Archangel Raphael is coming by again. Famous deaths. Elijah McCoy had been born in 1844. He died in 1929, 111. Charlotte Cooper 
1870 she was born. She died in 1966. Ralph Richardson was born in 1902, 111. He died in 1983, 111. Orson Welles was born in 1915. He died in 1985. And Elijah McCoy, perhaps of the Hatfields and McCoys, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, no, I don't believe so. Looks like he was a Canadian American, an inventor, best known for his 57 U.S. patents, most to do with the lubrication of steam engines. He was born on May 2nd in the year 1844. He's a Taurus from Colchester, Ontario, Canada. He died on October 10th, so 11 in the year 1929, 1-1-1 at age 85-13. Charlotte Cooper was born in 1870. She's English. Her full name was Charlotte Cooper Sterry, a ten tennis champion. She won five single titles at Wilbin Wilbin Wimbledon Jeez. Uh, and in 1900 became the first individual female Olympic champion in any sport. She was born on September 22nd in the year 1870 to so master number 22, or which is a 13, by the way. Um nine and four under the star sign Virgo birthplace Ealing England she died on October 10th in the year 1966 so she died on 11 in the year 13 age 96 Orson Welles is an American actor best remembered for his innovative work in all three media Theater, most known and most notably Caesar in the year 1937, 11. It was a groundbreaking Broadway adaption of Julius Caesar. In radio, the debut of the Mercury Theater, whose uh, The War of the Worlds in 1938, 111, is one of the most famous broadcasts in history of radio. And in film, Citizen Kane in 1941. He cons was consistently ranked as one of the all-time greatest films. He was born on May 6th, so 11, in the year 1915, under the star sign Taurus, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, USA. He died on October 10th, in the year 1985, at age 70, of a heart attack. And R Ralph Richardson who had been born in 1902 or 111, is English, an actor. He dominated the British stage of the mid-20th century before becoming a film star. He worked in films throughout most of his career and played more than 60 cinema roles and was nominated for the Academy Award of his performance in Greystroke. He was born on December 19th in the year 1902. So he shares a, a birthday with a friend of mine. Uh, 111, 1902, under the star sign Sagittarius, birthplace Chel Cheltenham, England. He died on October 10th, 11, in the year 1983, 111, at the age of 80, of a stroke. And these people who are celebrating their birthdays, Giuseppe Verdi who was born in 1813 or nine is an Italian composer. He's famous for La Traviata Rigoletto. He was born on October 10th, the year 1813 is a Libra from Parma, Italy. He died on January 27th in the year 1901, 11 of a stroke. Fridjof Nansen. Born in 1861. Doesn't want to show me who he is. He's a Norwegian Arctic explorer and a Nobel laureate. He's famous um, for having been an explorer, a scientist, a diplomat, and a humanitarian who was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1922 for his work on behalf of the displaced victims of the First World World War and related conflicts. He was born on October 10th in the year 1861. He's a Libra from Christiania, now Oslo, Norway. He died on May 13th, 9, 
in the year 1930, 1111, at age 68 of a heart attack. R.K. Narayan, born in 1906, is Indian, as in like from India, an East Indian. Profession novelist, best known for his works set in the fictional South Indian town of Malgudi. He is one of three leading figures of early Indian literature in English, alongside Mulk Raj Anand and Raja Rao, and his and is credited with bringing the genre to the rest of the world. Narayan broke through with the help of his mentor and friend, Graham Greene, who was instrumental in getting publishers for Nar Narayan's first four books, including the semi-autobiographical -autobi trilogy of Swami and Friends and the Bachelor of Arts, and also The English Teacher. He was born on October 10th in the year 1906. He's a Libra from Chennai, Tamil Nadu in India. He died on May 13th in the year 2001 at the age of 94. So he died on the 13th at 13, age 13. Um, and of course, May 13th was also being nine and 2001 being 111. David Lee Roth will be 61 on this date. He's an American rocker profession. He's a member of the band Van Halen, best known for, as the original from 1974, 111, through 1985, and current 2006 to present lead singer of the Southern California-based hard rock band Van Halen, also known as a successful solo, solo artist, releasing numerous RIAA certified gold and platinum records. He was born on October 10th, 1954. He'll be 61 years old. He's a Libra from Bloomington, Indiana, USA. And lastly but not least, Chris... Ophilili, Ophili, it's O-F-I-L-I, -I. nationality, English, he's a painter, an English Turner Prize winning painter who was famous for incorporating elephant dung into his paintings, interesting, he was born on October 10th in the year 1968, he's 47 years old, a Libra from Manchester, England, okay, beginning with the energy of the page of air, who is logical, honest, impulsive, curious, challenging information, delays or changes to plans, truth delivered without tact. And opening to the four of earth. Four of earth back. Opening now to unity, Archangel Sandalphon. Major Arcana card, the Hierophant. Which is interesting because in the romance um cards where I'm, from where i'm going to get the uh advice i first saw engagement and then honeymoon and then wedding and then children and then back to wedding in that order so unity being the wedding card now opening to major arcana card renewal with archangel jeremiah unity is back And now opening to the unity again. <laughs> I was going to say the 10 of um, earth. I forgot to mention it though. And now opening to the six of air. This might be my last one. So the 10 of earth is about material uh, fulfillment. And of course the six of air moving on, moving into calm, still waters, leaving behind any rough times. Unity is back. I'm going to cut. Until difficult times being behind us. Time for happiness and joy. And landing now on the three of water, which is all about celebrations. Perhaps a wedding, graduation, or birth announcement, and the need to have more fun. I heard uh, put a ring on it this morning, and again, right away thought about those weddings, those engagements. Uh, it's not called put a ring on it. Single Ladies by Beyonce. Okay.
to the bottom of the deck is the three of fire. The um, This is the overall energy. It's abundance. Things are looking very good right now. Have patience at this time and make long-term plans. Perhaps those weddings. Because again, so far, that's on what I've been landing with this deck from where we're going to get our advice. So it's looking good. The masculine is the knight of fire, passionate, adventurous, self-assured, restless, a sudden event that needs immediate attention. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. Surrounded by life experience, Archangel Chamuel, a significant life event, a powerful revelation that leads to change. Time to spread your wings. Interesting. In his subconscious is the nine of water. Very nice. Your wish comes true. Concerns fade away. A love of life. Feminine. The four of earth is back and that is who is crowning us. Could be being too frivolous or too cautious with money. Or on a brighter side, more positive side, good business decisions, giving to less fortunate. Since we're the ten of earth or that showed up before, um, I'm going to go that route thus far and say that this is about good business decisions and giving to the less fortunate surrounding us is the page of fire who is outgoing creative confident and mischievous news of an exciting new endeavor use your originality and ingenuity in our subconscious is the moon archangel haniel important psychic insights events behind the scenes release fears that hold you back crowning Nice, the knight of water, who is emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and contemplative. Falling in love or wedding proposal. See, wedding, wedding, wedding so far. The need to balance emotions, an invitation to a social event, which makes sense with that three of water that showed up in the beginning as I was shuffling. And, ah, look at this. How awesome is this? So crowning is the knight of water, and at our feet is the two of water, a relationship that continues to grow closer forgiveness and that is still the energy surrounding us right now the energy of forgiveness um actually tuesday is yom kippur officially um being the way it's being celebrated according to that enoch calendar it was like i think the 15th of september in any case the positive resolution of a conflict so we've been having we've been bumping heads there's a lot of blue here so far um, that is very positive with the Knight of Water, the Two of Water, and the Nine of Water, the Wish card of the Tarot. And in the center from Archangel Michael is the Hermit. Interesting. T spend time in quiet meditation, spiritual teaching, and self-discovery. Uh, so we have a 13 here. And we have the Moon here telling us to release... This is release or death, and this is release. So feminine, that's um, with what you're to do with your hermit. You're to use any time in meditation and to yourself to figure out of what you need to let go. Okay, this is also another nine. This 18 is a nine as well, uh, like the hermit. So here we have 18 or nine again, which is more releasing because we're whether you consider it born uh like supreme math and a new start or endings um it's to let go you know it's out with the old and in with the new either in either case okay so that's what we're doing here masculine what's your deal with the two knights next to each other the two um most romantic knights in the tarot the knight of fire was very passionate and the knight of water who was very loving and emotional side by side looks like you're in a super awesome mood and perhaps that's what you're going to be using your alone time to you know to do is to stay in that meditate on remaining peaceful happy loving maybe it had something to do with this life event this something changed your perspective your point of view uh, something positive and it's ignited you it's inspired you that it's time for you to spread your wings as it says here on the card and of course again this is the wish card so any further 
assistance you feel you need in making this work, whatever this thing is that you're going to take off um, and save the day as the knight in shining armor, you've got extra help here with this. Awesome. Okay. Three major arcana cards and a nine card spread. So a lot of spirit here at the table. I don't see necessarily any light coming to this moon. Um, but maybe we're just supposed to, again, use it as an opportunity to release. Okay. So, again, beginning with, um, as far as the advice, with the energy of wedding, this situation involves marriage. And opening to reconciliation. Someone from your past will return into your life. Wedding is back yet again. Opening to healing family issues now. And now that's back. I'll go again one more time. This is nice attraction. And now attraction is back. But again, I saw engagement, honeymoon, wedding, children, wedding. And to land on after all that unrequited love and imbalance. That's not what's showing here. So maybe that's for a few. Because um, there's no evidence of that here. This is passion, passion, spirit, and love. That's all that's on the table. The overall energy is very soon. Clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. So that, along with, again, the three of fire. Masculine, your advice is release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. So again, this can be a physical ex, ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, both, whatever you're into. You may have somebody or somebodies to release. Um... And or this could be release your ex. This could have something to do with the life experience. And now you're ready to step forward, um, you know, as a man, as a being, whatever that means for you. You're ready to leave certain things behind, right? Former aspects of yourself and of your life and like reintroduce yourself. And that's releasing your ex. Feminine, your advice is reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning. And again, since this one is for the 11th, which is, I'm sorry, which is for the 10th, um, which is the day preceding Yom Kippur, which is all about forgiveness. And we're, in any case, in a period of forgiveness right now. Maybe um, the feminine's advice is reconciliation because it's her um, who is not necessarily supposed to be the one to make the approach. As a matter of fact, I don't think she is. We have the Knight of Water coming, I mean, the Knight of Fire coming this way, as well as the Knight of Water coming this way. Um, although this is shared, the Knight of Water. So I don't think that the feminine has to approach. Um, but I do think that she has, is the one who has to be particularly open, uh, to this reconciliation. I hope that you guys enjoy the day's reading. Namaste, angels.